Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, back to do another one of the mini tag videos that are floating around out there. Uh, there's about three or four of them that I really wanted to do, and I just finished doing uh, Mr. Walker's tag, which is kind of the traditional tag that I do each year. And now I also want to jump on board another one, which is by DJ Vinyl Vertigo. And this is the 2024 Soul tag. And so I'll leave a link right down below there so you can go check out his channel as well as jump on board this, this uh, vinyl tag because it's uh, definitely a fun one to do. So let's just kind of jump right into it. You guys know how it works. 20 questions and we just kind of run through it. Uh, number one, name the most listened to soul album. And what I thought about was not necessarily throughout my lifetime or whatever, but like over the past three years or so, three to four years, which albums in my R&B and soul collection have I listened to the most? And it was a close one between Bobby Womack and this one right here, but I think I've actually listened to this one more, which is Miguel's Kaleidoscope Dream. This is his 2012 release, and um, yeah, it's just one that I don't get tired of listening to at all. Um, you know, awesome stuff on here, like songs like Adorn, uh, Use Me, Kaleidoscope Dream. My favorite song is The Thrill, uh, How Many Drinks, Arch and Point. Just really, really cool stuff. And the thing I really like about it is I'm a huge fan of 80s R&B. Like, and that, that's one genre I feel like does, don't get a ton of love in the VC, but it's one of my absolute favorites. And a lot of the flavor inside of this album was stuff that made 80s R&B fantastic, which is probably the reason why I ended up loving it so much. So uh, yeah, fantastic album, highly recommend it. Matter of fact, for those that aren't familiar with Miguel, specifically that album, because some of his other albums don't sound exactly like it, I thought one thing that was interesting is, obviously there's a, a bunch of Harry Styles fans out there, and I was listening to the radio, XM radio one day, heard a song come on, and my first thought was, that kind of sounds a little bit like Miguel, is that a, so I just kind of kind of gave a look to see, and it was actually the song Adore You by Harry Styles. So if you happen to be a Harry Styles fan and kind of like that feel of what Adore You was for him, then you're going to want to make sure you go check out that Miguel album because that is that taken to a, a more R&B and kind of really smoother level. But uh, anyway, just want to throw that out there. Uh, question number two, most recent soul record purchase. That one was pretty simple. Got this one a couple weeks ago at the shop. Uh, the Impressions. And this, of course, is a, I shouldn't say of course, but this is a 1963 original pressing. And I was going to say this, of course, has the, the song It's All Right on there, one of their biggest hits. And uh, even though they were, you know, pretty big name band, I mean, you can't ignore the fact that one of the solo breakouts in this band was the one and only Curtis Mayfield. I mean, just one of the legends in the soul world. But yeah, just a beautiful original pressing there. So definitely glad to... Add that to the collection. Uh, number three, just a male solo artist. Ton to choose from there, but I'm going to go with George Jackson. And this is George Jackson in Memphis. Uh, he was one of those singer songwriters, and it definitely just very connected with the whole Memphis sound, you know, that Memphis soul sound. Like, uh, But really, really fantastic stuff. Really wasn't a lot of his stuff on vinyl. Uh, or just really kind of released period kind of till recently so really cool artist to check out and my favorite album is actually this one here I went ahead and pulled this out this is the CD uh, don't count me out uh, the fame recordings volume one there's some songs on this that have been released on a few recent vinyl releases but uh, my absolute favorite song by him which has not been pressed on any of the vinyl releases yet or any of the comps is search your heart love that song first time I heard that in a record store it was actually this CD and I was like I have got to go up front and see who that was and I'm buying whatever they're playing and it was it was this right here so if you're not familiar with them and you're gonna go check that out after my video here search your heart is the first song I recommend checking out by him if you like that dive deeper uh, next question a Stax release I'm gonna go with Isaac Hayes hot butter soul absolute classic legendary album here uh, if you are a hip-hop fan especially from the 80s and 90s hip-hop you know you listen to this album and you literally hear 20 30 different songs you can point out samples that came directly from this album 
uh, just just one of those awesome awesome pieces and, and whenever I think about stacks too, I always feel like I have to tell this story because it was just such an awesome day. Um, you know, I also wanted to show this too, which is the best of Sam and Dave. And this is actually signed by David Porter. Had a chance to meet him one time. And uh, and not only have a chance to meet him, but me and a few other people actually had a chance to kind of sit with him and just ask him tons of questions. Um, you know, not in like a gigantic group setting or anything. And it was just one of those kind of 45 minutes or whatever of just jaw on the floor because for those maybe that don't know like David Porter and Isaac Hayes were basically the two that wrote and produced I mean beyond the majority of stuff that came out of Stax Records like those were the two guys that were in the studio putting all the stuff together coming up with everything um, I, I mean just freaking amazing and so to sit here and to sit there and just listen to him talk about, it. yeah, and then Isaac and I did this, and and Otis was kind of like this, but he was more so I was like, Otis, we need to do this. But then we came up with this idea. We were walking down the street and we saw this and we thought, and the whole time you're just like, What? <laughs> it's just mind blowing amazing. But anyway, I always have to blab about that when I start talking about Stax Records, because it was just such an amazing thing. But let's move on. Question number five Soul Artist Not from America. We'll go with Josh Stone. I believe she's from the UK. Um, you know, maybe she doesn't look the part, but she sings the part, and that's all you need to know. So that's a Josh Stone Soul Sessions. Awesome, awesome, awesome artist there. Um, next one, number six, female soul artist. As I mentioned earlier, you know, 80s R&B is one of my absolute favorite genres. So I'm going to pick some females from the 80s, and I'm going to go with Climax. And this is their release from 1984. A really, really cool band. Um, they, in, my, in my opinion, they were very much the female version of Cameo. You know, Cameo to me was the the most rock and roll R&B band, especially in the 80s. They just kind of did things the way they wanted to do it. There was no sound they had to stick to. We're going to have some like guitar solos here. Next time we're going to have this all funky stuff. The next time we're going to be completely silly. Like they just did whatever they wanted to do. Very much a rock and roll attitude. And uh, Climax was kind of the female version of that. Um, you know, great stuff on here. Like the men all pause. Kind of more of a traditional 80s R&B song. And then I Miss You. Slow ballad that was a hit for them. Uh, Meeting in the ladies room. Another awesome one. Just really, really great, great, great band there. So I'm going to choose them as my female artist. Number seven, gospel album or single by a soul artist. I pulled out two, so I figured I'd just go ahead and show both. I'm going to go with Jesus is Love by the Commodores, one of my favorite, favorite songs by them. And then I'm also going to go with the song off of this album, which is Johnny Robbins. This is Memphis High, and he did a really cool track called God is Love on this one. So uh, you'll get two for that that one, just because I figured why choose between the two. I'll just show both of them since I already pulled them out. Uh, question number eight, blue-eyed soul artist. Let's go more than blue-eyed. Let's go redhead. I'm going to go with the one and only Simply Red. Boy's got a voice. It's smooth. It's just freaking awesome. I've always loved him. And uh, this is definitely my favorite, um, well, probably say my favorite album by him. Definitely has my favorite song by him, which is Holding Back the Years. Just does such a perfect, smooth delivery on that song. I love it. So I hope eventually he'll get around to uh, issuing his greatest hits on vinyl, because the CD is awesome. Would love to have that on vinyl as well. Uh, question number nine, soul artist that more people should be aware of. This time I'm going to go with Gregory Porter. This is Be Good. Uh, and mainly kind of going with him because there's not a lot of modern day soul artists that I really care that much about at all or that I really just kind of have any interest in whatsoever when hearing their stuff. Uh, but Porter is one of the few. And I think one of the things is especially coming out of the 90s and going into the 2000s and, you know, kind of moving through that time frame. It's just like everything R&B and soul became about like how much I want your body and I'm this and I'm aching for you know just like and it was just kind of like it's it's like okay is there anything else is there anything else and like Porter is something else um, you know it's something that's almost kind of more 
not jazzy, but definitely more of kind of a, a it's really kind of hard to describe. There's more of an innocence to it. Uh, there's more of a musical innocence to it. And I, I'll even be the first to say, he's not exactly a great singer. <laughs> I mean, he really isn't. But he just he just kind of makes some music that's just very pleasant to sit around and to and to take in. And this is definitely my favorite album by him, which is Be Good. So if you're not familiar with him, maybe stream a couple things and, and check it out. Uh, question number 10, soul artist featured on a rock album. A few of those, but I decided to go with Shaka Khan. Of course, she was the one that sang... Um, I guess kind of the chorus and backing vocals for Higher Love with Steve Winwood, one of my favorite songs by him from the 80s, so I'll pick Shaka Khan for that one. Um, question number 11, uh, Motown release, ton of those of course, and I'm going to go with this one here actually, one's a little bit later, this is the Temptations reunion album, and I'm kind of considering Gordy and Motown kind of one and the same, so uh, give a little leeway there. But yeah, this is their reunion album from 1982 where they got back together to do a reunion album. A uh, lot, of, lot of work on here done also with Rick James because um, Rick James is actually Melvin's, um, was it nephew or cousin? He, he's one of those. He's like very closely related in the family. And he, he actually did a couple things on here, including writing the, the hit song off here, which is Standing on the Top. Uh, which was a fantastic song because not only was it that 80s funky Rick James type of thing, but you got the opportunity to hear Eddie Kendricks, David Ruffin, Dennis Edwards, and Richard Street all singing lead in a song. I mean, like that that right there covers 90% of all of the number one hits and everything that Temptations ever did with like those four lead singers right there. So to hear them all on one album and on one track, like Standing on the Top, freaking awesome. So definitely make sure you check that out if you're not familiar with that album. Uh, number 12, Soul Artist Deserving of a Box Set. Quite a few of those, but I'm going to give this nod to Mr. Bobby Womack. Awesome, legend, one of the greatest gritty voices in soul music as far as I'm concerned. Had a very long career too, stretched out over a number of decades. Matter of fact, a lot of his my favorite stuff by him is actually in the 80s, as opposed to his earlier 60s, 70s stuff. Um, but yeah, just one of the absolute greats. And I would love to have a box set much like that that new Tina Turner, that Queen box set, where it's not studio albums, it's more or less kind of a comp five LPs of just a compilation of her career and all the great stuff. Would love that same thing for for Bobby Womack. That'd be awesome. Uh, number 13, soul act I've seen in concert. I'm never going to pass up the fact to say I had a chance to see the one and only Tina Turner in concert. I actually saw her when Lionel Richie opened for her in Kansas City. And that was just a show and a half, boy. They they just killed it. So, so happy I got a chance to see her. Uh, question number 14, jazz record by soul artist. Really couldn't think of one. Like a, an actual you know, consistent soul artist that stepped out and did a jazz record, um, you know, just, just really didn't have anything that kind of came to mind. I mean, like, George Benson was one, but I don't really consider him, he didn't really do stuff I feel as soul, even though he kind of played with sometimes with that soul, smooth jazz and everything, but yeah, I don't really have an answer for that one, I guess. Uh, number 15, soul artist in a group recording and solo recording. Well, let's go with Earth, Wind, and Fire. This is their album Last Days and Times from 1972. And one of the lead singers, lead slash backing singers in Earth, Wind, and Fire was Mr. Philip Bailey, uh, where he broke out solo career and going into the 80s and uh, early 80s. And uh, for those maybe that don't know Philip, maybe you know if you see him there, but he's the one that sang the duet Easy Lover with Phil Collins. But, uh, but yeah, I mean... Just one of the absolute greats. This is my favorite solo album by him, which has my favorite solo song by him, which is I Know is the name of the song. And love it to death, but definitely one of the legends in the R&B world. Uh, let's see, question number 16, favorite soul song. I refuse to answer that because I don't think I actually can. Like I, I just, my mind was literally hurting trying to pick out, like to say this is my favorite soul song. 
So the closest that I can get with these two records is I can say, I've always thought a change is gonna come is arguably the best soul recording of all time, even though it's not even my favorite Sam Cooke song. Like, Bring It On Home to me is my favorite Sam Cooke song. But I think A Change Is Gonna Come is probably the best soul recording of all time. But can't say my favorite song. The other thing I was able to get somewhat close to is when you go to Wilson Pickett, who's one of my top three vocalists of all times, uh, in the song Hey Jude, when you get to the center, the middle of the song, the part that goes that goes right into the the na na na, you know, in the Hey Jude, when he does whatever that that belching scream is that he does for that 15 or 20 seconds when the song transitions into that na 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 part, it 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 blows my mind every single time I hear it. So that is arguably one of my favorite moments in a an R&B or soul song. But that is as close as I can get to saying a favorite about something. I absolutely cannot pull a favorite song. I, I can't do it. So I'm going to have to plead the fifth on that one. Uh, question number 17, a reggae soul artist release. Um, again, I took the question as like a soul artist who normally is a, a soul singer that did a reggae song and or, or, or did a, a reggae album. And I really didn't have, maybe I'm misreading that, but I didn't really have anything to kind of answer that one. Uh, number 18, live in concert soul recording. That was the easy one to jump right to. Sam Cooke live at the Harlem Square. I mean, this is definitely one of my favorite and one of the best live recordings. Because uh, I'm not a huge live album person, period, across all genres, but this one is absolute killer. Uh, from 1963. And the thing I think that makes this one is it, kind of cool is that um, you know, Sam really had three different worlds that he he could fit very well into, and, and like, and like, kick it in those worlds, the gospel world with the gospel delivery, the smooth jazz vocal jazz type of easy listening world which he could do with perfection, and then the get down grit in your soul world, and he could do that as well, and this was the get down in your in the grit your soul world that he, he did on, on this particular performance at the Harlem Square Club. So fantastic, fantastic. And one of my absolute favorite moments on this is between the song Somebody Have Mercy and the song Bring It On Home To Me, it plays like a concert. No, they don't pause it or anything. So you hear the, uh, you know, just like the, the transition from one song to the next. That transition between those two songs that he did to me just shows you exactly what made Sam Cooke the genius that he was. It's like 30, 45 seconds or something like that that just shows everything pure about why Sam Cooke was the legend that Sam Cooke became. Fantastic. So I'm gonna pick that as my, my live pick. Sorry, I'm getting a little, a little long-winded here, but good stuff makes me start wanting to yap. Uh, soul compilation release. Again, I picked two, so I figured instead of whittling it down, I'll just go ahead and show both. Um, we got the Loma compilation here, and then the LaFace Records Presents compilation here. I actually showed this one not too long ago in a What's Been Spinning video. Just a compilation of, you know, kind of a smaller label, uh, not a lot of gigantic hits that a lot of people would know, which is kind of nice because this is just buying these comps. In most cases, you're just discovering soul that you never heard and probably never would have heard in most cases but really really great old school stuff there and um, and then this is kind of more of a modern modern compilation the platinum collection just all of the the platinum hits that came out from that label and I'll kind of do this just so you can see the if I get the glare out of there I'm sorry probably can't see it that well but that gives you an idea about the track listing in case you're curious about that but uh yeah so that's two kind of compilations from different different time frames. And question number 20, favorite soul channel in the BC? I'd probably have to say the one that I've gotten the most or watched the most dealing with soul from over my however many years in the BC would probably be Seco Funk. Um, and I don't think he's really posting that much anymore. I think he's had a few things here and there. But a few years ago, like I used to watch his stuff all the time and just discover it so much on the the soul side from him. Matter of fact, now I'm thinking about that, 
when I'm mentioning the album that I've been listening to the most over the past few years, well, I discovered this album by watching his channel. I had never heard of it before. He showed it and started talking about how impressed he was by it and, you know, didn't expect it to be as good as it was. And I was like, well, let me go check it out. And boom. So, uh, yeah, I'd probably have to say he would be the, the channel that I've, that I've gotten the most soul from, if you will. But uh, anyway, there you go, VC. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Friends for sticking around. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.